Hello. In this short video, we are going to talk about adenomatous polyps of the gastrointestinal tract. They occur most frequently in the colon, but can also occur in the small bowel and in the stomach. So these are made up of glandular epithelium, as you can tell from the name adenomatous, and they are neoplastic. So what we see on microscopy would be this plastic mucosa, um, and they are considered pre-malignant. They can progress through an accumulation of genetic aberrations to carcinoma. When there is invasion into the submucosa, then the polyp is considered a malignant polyp or there is adenocarcinoma arising in an adenomatous polyp. In terms of the gross appearance or morphology, there are two types of adenomatous polyps. There are the pedunculated ones, which have a stalk, and the sessile polyps, which do not have a stalk. This is actually a cut section, and you can see that the polyp is directly in contact with the rest of the mucosa. So here is an example of a very low power microscopic view of a pedunculated polyp. And this picture is taken from Pathopic, which is a wonderful resource that actually allows us to show uh, histology and gross pathology pictures. So here is the stalk of the polyp. And this little part here, which looks a little bit darker, here is the cauterized base of the stalk. And this is the benign or the normal colonic mucosa. And again over here, and this is the submucosa, which contains some loose connective tissue as well as some congested blood vessels. The adenomatous polyp itself, you can see the head of the polyp is in this region, and you notice that the mucosa is a lot darker than what we see in the normal colon. The reason for this is because the nuclear cytoplasmic ratios, or the NC ratios, of the dysplastic epithelial cells are much higher than the normal colonic epithelial cells. Let's take a closer look. Here is a slightly more close-up look of a pedunculated adenomatous polyp, where this is the dysplastic area. And if we take an even closer look, we can see that this is the area of normal colonic mucosa, and this darker blue area is the dysplastic mucosa. The normal mucosa has very basal, very small nuclei. So you can see that they almost form a row right at the base of the cell. And they're very prominent goblets in the columnar cells. So the NC ratios are extremely low and the cells appear pinker because of the predominance of cytoplasm. As opposed to these crypts where you can see that the nuclei are taller or longer and they occupy a greater proportion of the cell. An even higher power microscopic view is shown here, where we can see the nuclei are elongated, um, almost uh, like cigar-shaped nuclei. The nuclei are not just located in the basal part of the cell, but you also have nuclei in the middle part of the cell here, and even close to the luminal surface, like here. We also see mitotic figures, and all these are features of dysplasia. So we can grade dysplasia into low-grade and high-grade, and usually the appearance of these elongated nuclei with some degree of nuclear stratification, this is seen in low-grade dysplasia, whereas in high-grade dysplasia, the nuclei are rounder, they have more prominent nucleoli, and also there may be a little bit more architectural abnormality in the sense that the crypts usually appear even more irregular and more crowded in high-grade dysplasia. In patients with high-grade dysplasia, uh, the adenomatous polyps should be completely excised because there is a higher risk of progression to carcinoma if not removed. And here is an even higher magnification view uh, taken from Pathopic. Here is the normal colonic mucosa with the very basal and rather small nuclei and very prominent goblets. And in contrast, this is the dysplastic epithelium with low-grade dysplasia showing tall cigar-shaped nuclei that are located in the base and in the middle of the cell and sometimes even closer to the luminal surface. And there is usually a very abrupt transition from dysplastic mucosa to normal mucosa. Usually, these polyps are removed at the time of endoscopy, and what we will evaluate is the grade of the dysplasia. We also look at the architecture of the polyp in terms of whether it is a tubular adenoma, meaning that most of the crypts form these 
tube-like invaginations, or whether it is a villous adenoma. And the villous architecture is seen here, where you have more finger-like projections of the dysplastic epithelium. So if it is mixed, it is called a tubulovillous adenoma, either that, or if it's predominantly tubular, it's a tubular adenoma, or a villous adenoma. The other things that we evaluate are the grade of dysplasia, whether it is low grade or high grade. And we also try to evaluate whether the entire polyp has been excised, in other words, whether there is dysplasia at the excision margins. It is also very important, especially in polyps with high-grade dysplasia, to evaluate whether there is invasive adenocarcinoma, in other words, carcinoma that has invaded through the muscularis mucosa into the submucosa.